I was censored on three platforms in the span of three days. My YouTube red- videos of Redacted Tonight were banned throughout Europe and the UK. Uh, my show was gone. And on top of that, my personal podcast, Moment of Clarity, was deleted from Spotify, Spotify in three days. And the idea that anyone would celebrate this level of censorship is really tragic. Uh, and even, you know, the the guests you just had on who I have worshipped in the past, apparently they're celebrating uh, this, this censorship as well, the Yes Men. But, you know, they've done some great stuff, but they need to re-examine why they would celebrate censorship right now. Andy is still here. And I know that you said something about uh, the Yes Men uh, praising censorship. So can I bring him in to respond to that? Sure, we can chat. All, all I said yeah. was that I, I know he was uh, excited, I guess, that RT America was shut down. And my my view on that is that it, it seems to be a misunderstanding of what RT America was. Yeah. If you think it was just spouting... Uh, Putin talking points, then you don't understand it. And of course, I've had them on for interviews, which shows right. what I'm willing to show in my my TV show. You know? All right, let's so let's do this. We like to squash beef at this show. So Andy, welcome back. You're muted. Oh, wait, Andy's muted. Yeah, I didn't do that. Putin muted Andy. Okay, yeah. now he's on muted. Yeah. Putin muted Andy. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Putin. Yeah. No. Muted. Um. Yeah. No. I uh, I cheered when um, you mentioned that you know RT had been. Um, taken off and it wasn't because um i don't like rt america or don't like you know what sorts of things are on there i I, uh all i know of rt america is your show and i love it but um but just that there has been this outrageously huge uh response in general and i wasn't thinking about the censorship side so much as like wow like it's unprecedented that the world reacts to a an autocrat in this way like it's never happened before and this is Putin's war. It's not Russia's war. Um, so it's a large target, though, because he, he's, you know, got Russia behind his name. Um, so it just it, it feels unprecedented and amazing that that this is happening. And this is just another little, you know, example that, yeah, may be misguided in the particular of it. And I do hope well, it comes back. But so I but I would say there's a reason that the world has reacted in this new way that we haven't seen. And it's because it's 24 seven coverage on your mainstream media outlets. Whereas we've killed, you know, we've helped kill with our bombs, Saudi Arabia, 377,000 people in Yemen. And there's zero, essentially zero coverage. Uh, More people are going to die in Afghanistan from our economic war this year than died from our bombs. And Mm -hmm. there's zero coverage. A hundred thousand people dead in Venezuela from our economic war on them and zero coverage. So it's a choice by the mainstream media to cover only this. And and it's because it serves a propaganda purpose for the U.S. and NATO, uh, which is a military alliance. Uh, <laughs> so it, I, I get that it, it's nice to see people care about civilian deaths, but I think we need to look at the big picture. Yeah, yeah. And and also Ukrainians are white. But surely that, that has a role. Oh, that makes it, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, there's, there's, no, there's no questioning that this is there's a disproportionate response. There should have been this response to the um, F word Iraq war, um, you know, where we killed an entire, who knows how many, like there's no counting, sure, uh, certainly a lot more than have been killed so far in Ukraine. But, but, you know, the enemy is the, the perfect is the enemy of the good. This is like, this is good. There, there's this universal outrage. There's this um, uniting of everybody behind this, behind opposition to what's going on. And yeah, it would be better if that had happened with Iraq. Um, Effectively. I I don't think it's just that there's a double standard. I think that is a double standard, but I also think we have to look at what this opposition is turning into. Right. So I think it's really great to condemn killing civilians, but if the opposition is turning into like, we're going to cut off Russian streamers, you know, people who were born and live in Russia, or if it's like, let's have a uh, no fly zone. Uh, right. I mean, that's what's scary to me is like, I'm not saying, I think when we can walk this line and say, like, you know, this, I, Phyllis Bennis came on my show and I really like what she had to say. She said that what Putin's, uh, Putin, what Putin did was not unprovoked, but it was unjustified. But her no. solution to that isn't rah rah go team USA. It's it's diplomacy. It's negotiate yeah. 
And it's acknowledging that the, the complexity of it. And that is what is scaring me. And I feel like we the, haven't, the, I feel like we haven't seen this on the left, this kind of like jingoism um, that we're seeing now. Those are all great points. And you're right that this is leading, the so-called care for Ukrainian civilians is leading to actually more war. People want to arm Ukrainians, you right. know, send send them missiles and things. But as Scott Ritter, the former UN weapons inspector who, uh, obvi- you know, everyone knows, called the no WMD in Iraq and said it on every network and had his life destroyed for it. Uh, he said, look, the outcome of this is known. This is one of the most powerful militaries in the world going up against one of the least powerful militaries in the world. And the outcome of this is known. So the question is, are we going to have diplomacy and a peace process that stops so many people from dying uh, right now and stops us from being on the brink of nuclear war? Or are we going to cheer for just an endless kind of morass of killing that is what right now it seems like the U.S. kind of wants. The U.S. is realizing this is a propaganda win. This is a win for uh, NATO alliances to be everyone be anti-Russia. So they're kind of cheering and working for this to continue and more people to die in in back channels. I'm not talking about your average mm-hmm. American citizen. Uh, so right. you're right. This is what is this turning into? And a lot of people don't understand that a no fly zone is basically nuclear war because yeah. if NATO declares a no-fly zone, they then have to shoot down Russian jets. You shoot down Russian jets, you end up in nuclear war. 